is Sunday, the 25th day of November 2012. I am your host, Alex Jones. And we have got an incredibly important transmission lined up for you yet again today on a host of issues across the board here. We're going to be getting into the cybersecurity directive that Obama signed a week and a half ago, which Congress, I was reading an article last night, has complained they're not allowed to see. How is it that Congress, that's co-equal to the executive and the judicial, how can the legislative that's co-equal to the executive and the judicial, how can it not be privy to the president's secret order? See, Congress wouldn't give Obama what he wanted on cybersecurity. Enhance control of the internet over to globalists, over the UN and others. And so it was really hitting me last night that he said he'd do an executive order to just do it, but still that executive order would be public. So he just said, I just signed another order, and by the way, it's secret. And whereas the internet's a double-edged sword, you can use it to reach incredible amounts of people. The system knows how to game it, just like a black box voting machine. <laughs> Here's an example. 20-plus videos just disappeared off our YouTube channel. And I called and talked to the people involved with it. They didn't delete 20 plus videos, but it says deleted by user. And that's just an example of when you're on another platform where you think it's your website, you think it's your content, your ideas, your video, your art, but they can just disappear it whenever they want. Uh, one time they deleted, changed the channel. He was out of town visiting family, didn't even have his computer with him. He was at a picnic. I called his cell phone number. Uh, what was his name? Ken Webb. Nice fella. About a year and a half ago. It only had like 7 million views on that particular video. Now it's like 12 million on that particular video. Plus, there's a bunch of different versions of it, but uh, he uploads a lot of our documentaries. So I, and I've had him on as a guest, so I found his number in my computer, called him up, and I said, uh, hey, uh, Ken, I said, uh, did you delete that? And he said, no, I'm at a barbecue with family. And I said, well, it says you deleted it, deleted by user. And by the way, when a user deletes it, you can't ever put it back up. We raised a stink, and Google admitted somebody hacked in and deleted it, so they reinstated it. Something they've said before and ever since is impossible. So I don't know what's going on. And we've got four or five big channels. We've got over 400 and something million views. And YouTube's an important outreach. It's maybe 15% of our outreach, but it's a very wide, diverse audience. Uh, our biggest audience is on terrestrial AM and FM radio. That reaches the lion's share of the three million a day, but it's mainly a conservative, libertarian type audience. And it's great to talk to the choir, but it's important to reach out places like YouTube. That's why it's important to buy the DVDs at InfoWarsStore.com and have a library of them and also give them to people because then you have a hard copy. Or if you're going to go watch the videos at PrisonPlanet.tv, our site, so we have a backup, or on YouTube, download them. Save them. You know, I've talked a lot about Web 2.0. That's why we started... Um, the magazine, because the globalists are moving to censor the web, so we call it print 2.0, to have a hard copy of each month's key articles, 60 pages of it, uh, in InfoWars magazine. But uh, just an interesting little tidbit here at the start of the broadcast, that, that they can delete your videos, and then it says you did it. All right, we'll be right back. Stay with us. Big show. Through Friday, I am live, 12 noon to 3 p.m. Eastern with the weekday show. And then I come back live every single Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, 5 to 7 Eastern. That is 2 to 5, or I guess that would be 2 to 4 uh, in the Pacific, uh, 3 to 5 Mountain, but it's all academic. 
Again, thank you so much for joining us on this Sunday, the 25th day of November 2012. And we have, again, just a ton of key information that we're going to be covering today. Uh, coming up later in the hour, I just wanted to read a small stack of just the police state news today. Just the out of control government news today where violent criminals are allowed to go free but the general public is savagely abused by the system because the system sees you as the food. Soylent Green is made out of people. They don't want to physically eat you, at least not yet, uh, but the bureaucracy and the mega corporations that are anti-free market monopolistic that control us through government and shut down their competition through government, they extract your labor and your energy. And to control you, they've distorted the educational process to where we have a dumbed down, arrested development population that, that does not have any idea uh, how this world even operates. But let me just give you a few of these headlines. Uh, first off, some good news, uh, some some sanity here. Piedmont officer is fired over public urination ticket. The three-year-old was seen uh, running around the front yard and peed up against a tree. Uh, and I thought you weren't a red-blooded Southerner unless you peed in your backyard. Uh, but, but, but the point is, is the good neighbor called the police, of course. Can't pass up any reason to call the police. And the police came and knocked on the door and they gave her a $2,500 ticket. And they'd like to, of course, make the child a sex offender if they could. Uh, but uh, the police chief has fired uh, the officer who ought to move to North Korea. Don't worry, though. The union will get him reinstated. This is all uh, just for show. Uh, that's up in Oklahoma. Florida woman arrested on charge. She rode manatee. Manatees come up and want to swim with you. That's NBC. And they want to put her in jail for a couple of years uh, for that. But don't worry. Uh, more heads were found this week on the Texas-Mexico border and there's all sorts of incredible crime going on and stabbings and murders that aren't even investigated, but uh, the uh, person riding the manatee will get in a lot of trouble. Uh, New York City storm victims' homes looted over Thanksgiving. What is it, three weeks after the hurricane? And uh, looting is, uh, is uh, ongoing. Uh, but, hey, don't worry. Uh, they are arresting people that try to truck in gas for their neighbors uh, if it's in an improper container. So uh, California man jailed for four days for recording police. Uh, that's in the local news there. It's also is a photography is on a crime dot com that chronicles this. And the guy's about 30 feet away, legally, lawfully videotaping. I see I saw a video this week where they arrested people. What was it in Chicago videotaping an illegal checkpoint? Just to, you don't do that in the land of the free home of the brave. Uh, continuing health care workers fired for failing to get flu shot vaccinations. Um, even though it doubles your chances of getting the flu that year in major government studies and doesn't protect you and gives you brain damage. Uh, and over in the UK, they're, near, they're now taking people's children who are members of the UK Independence Party, which is the third largest party in the country, extremely mainline, and simply wants e the uh, EU out of British politics and have sovereignty UK-wide. It's, it's the fastest growing party, too. And they say that uh, being against the euro is illegal and your children will be taken. That's the London Guardian. Uh, continuing, it's authoritarianism is what it's called. Uh, Saudi husbands alerted by text if their wives leave the country. Uh, the, uh, G the GPS tracking that's in all cell phones globally under standardization that they use to track and trace us illegally here in the U.S. and in, in Europe and North America as well in Australia, Canada. Well, there it's used. Uh, the government tracks the women for the husbands with it. Uh, so there you go. I mean, don't feel bad. They do it to all of us here. Laptops they issue, the free laptops that taxpayers pay for, uh, from California to uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, they watch you at home, and the government's now announced that. And uh, you must wear RFID trackers around your necks uh, in San Antonio, or you're expelled. That's been now national news. Here's some of the other police state news I thought I'd... Uh, get at here for you, but then I'll get into more detail on those. United Nations wants to use drones, Weekly Standard. I mean, everybody's getting the new drones, and the um, the global government uh, wants some drones as well. Uh, and so uh, the French news agency is also reporting that. And the UN runs giant mass murder operations uh, all over the world. I was talking to a uh, 
young lady this weekend, and she was telling me her dream to be a high commissioner in the UN to save people. And I said, you do, do you know about who founded the UN? Do you, do you know about the Rockefellers? Do you know about eugenics? Do you know uh, the UN runs murdering operations and white slavery, you know, sex kidnapping worldwide? And she just didn't want to hear about it. Because you know what? The television said the UN were great people, so they must be. Uh, shipping containers to become condos in Detroit. Uh, it's being reported on by ABC News. That's where the folks are moving in there. Uh, we paid 20 plus billion to move uh, General Motors to China. Uh, shipping containers, but, but hey, don't feel bad. In New York and in San Francisco, this is out of CBS News, San Francisco's supervisors approved 220 foot square foot apartments. That's smaller than most jail cells. That includes the bathrooms, uh, the bathroom and the kitchen and the closet. And uh, there's barely room to lay down in it. And it's a 10 to 1 vote. And they say it's for the earth to cut our carbon footprint. And, of course, what this is really about is, see, they can raise the taxes. They're talking about making you in San Francisco pay $10,000 a year if you own a 2000, a 200, excuse me, 220-foot uh, prison cell. And, 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 see, that's the model. They're going to raise property taxes uh, on everyone until you cannot live in anything but this. But then the globalists, they're all exempt from the taxes. Did you know in the EU, the EU bureaucrats who are unelected, who actually run the EU it's, uh, and, and make 81% uh, of uh, UK laws now, even though the UK isn't officially part of it, did you know they're exempt from the EU-wide uh, VAT? You, you don't believe me, just type in. Uh, uh, EU bureaucrats exempt from their own taxes. In fact, guys, if you type that in, we'll show people a headline. We're also streaming video uh, at prisonplanet.tv. We like to have a, a video video record uh, of that. And by the way, if you want to have a video record of this show, you can go to prisonplanet.tv. A membership is 59 cents, uh, 59, 59 cents a, what is it, 59 cents a uh, week? What is it? Ten memberships for five ninety five a month, whatever that comes down to. You create a username, passcode, just pays for the band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fifty nine cents. Um, you get ten memberships. You get. So I mean, how much is that a month? If folks do the math out there, ten memberships for five ninety five a month. So you just buy one membership for five ninety five, the same username and passcode. You can share with the ten people, so they can be simultaneously logged in and read my book, Paul Watson's book, see all twenty five of my films, dozens of other films, the nightly news, and the live stream six days a week of the TV show. The point is, we have that there as an archive of all the footage and material of seventeen years. The site's been up for close to ten. Uh, and it just gets better and better all the time, and it does finance a lot of what we're doing here to have a prisonplanet.tv membership. My point is, the reason I say that is we also then a day or so later post this stuff to YouTube for everybody. Those that are supporters at prisonplanet.tv kind of pay it forward and help get the word out. But uh, YouTube just deleted 20 plus uh, of the last week's videos. We didn't do it. They just deleted them. Uh, and, they, and they say we deleted it. So, I mean, you know, you just can't trust the new Web 2.0 system is where you're on their platforms and they control what you do. And the New American Magazine reported, as well as the Associated Press last week, the UN is set to be given control of the Internet and domain registry, as well as uh, the DNS server numbers. And uh, Obama has signed a secret order that Congress isn't even allowed to see uh, taking over the Internet with the Internet kill switch. Way, if you are a new listener and you're tuning in for the first time and you hear some things that sound crazy, we are not joking. When I am engaged in satire, which I do occasionally, I will tell you up front and at the end of it that it's satire. This is not satire. Uh, I do agree with you, though, it's crazy. But I get called crazy a lot because I'm covering insane things. Uh, you know, Hitler did a lot of really crazy stuff. Uh, doesn't mean you're crazy if you wrote about what Hitler did. Though I've read some books on Hitler that read like a horror novel. Uh, same thing on a book I read about Caligula. I read several books about Roman emperors of, uh, you know, marrying their horses, ordering people murdered for no reason, dressing up like vampires at night and going out and murdering people. Uh, it's crazy, but we're not crazy for being informed.
And a lot of uh, kind of the yuppie class out there, they believe it's a sacrament of goodliness to be ignorant, to be uh, foolish, and to be easily bamboozled. But when I get up here and explain that a world government is being formed, a private corporate world government uh, that the globalist crime syndicate bosses, this, this worldwide mafia themselves, uh, calls a new world order, that is not my opinion, that is not my view, uh, that is a certified public fact. There are hundreds of videos online with heads of state of every major country calling for a private corporate global government. And you know, we made the film, I produced the film a few years ago that's on DVD, that's excellent, uh, called um, Invisible Empire that Jason Burma's directed. It's got to have over 100 clips in it with different world leaders calling for global government. And it is an unelected global government. You know, I have so many, quote, liberals come up to me and say, well, hey, you know, didn't we go from hunter-gatherers to agrarian farmers to uh, small civilization, city-states, to uh, regions, to countries, to empires, and now it's time for Star Trek, one world government. Well, this is a one world government run by very nasty social engineers uh, who think the general public are a bunch of dumb animals and have engineered things so that that is a self-fulfilling prophecy. And so I find that so many people that sign on to the New World Order, they, they kind of are make-believing that they're part of the system. And that, well, yes, we are carrying out eugenics. Well, yes, they are putting things in the water. You know, there are too many people, Alex. And I'm like, but they're doing it to you too. So what it is is a bunch of idiots who kind of follow along with the globalist juggernaut overrunning society. And they kind of run in front of it like they're part of it. Even though it's going to suck them in as well. Uh, but here is the uh, Daily Express. It's also in the Sunday Express uh, newspaper. Eurocrats told, keep dodging taxes. European Union court rules they do not have to pay any income taxes. I mean, there it is. Everybody else has to pay it and has to pay VAT. They are exempt because they're dictators. And who got the countries of Europe to sign on back in 1967? They had a meeting every 10 years, 47, 57, 67. You can debate when the euro got really set up. Or you can fast forward to 97, every 10 years they met. 47, 57, 67, 77, 87, 97. And then they had the, what was it? The 60th anniversary of the euro in 2000. So you can see where they think it began. If they had the 60th anniversary in 2007, well, then you know when they believe the euro began. But the general public's told it began in 2000. But it started by getting the countries, oh, we're just signing on to an economic deal. We're just signing on to a trade pact, kind of like NAFTA or GATT. And then the public's like, well, let us see us. Well, it's a secret order. Kind of like Bush's order creating the North American Union with Vicente Fox and uh, of Mexico and also, the Canadian Prime Minister was part of that at Waco, Texas in 2005. That order is still secret, though parts of it have been released under four-year lawsuits by Judicial Watch, of all people, of all groups. And right there, we are under a North American Union, and it's already signed a deal with the European Union, and we're already under a global government right now. And that's what's so frustrating, is that we're so far down this thing... And we've already lost so much sovereignty that Obama th this year in two different uh, speeches and then in three different congressional hearings, the Joint Chiefs and the Chairman told Congress, we played the clips here at nauseum, you can type in Congress told NATO and UN over, over military. The President said, not only is Congress not over war now, even though over the purse and the power to declare war and everything, and over taxes, I mean, it's right there in the Constitution, First, they say the states don't count or exist, and then now the Congress doesn't exist. And they told our military, and they tell the officer corps this, and they tell the Congress, 
They say, hey, the president's over the military, and he gets his authority, not as a dictator, that'd be bad enough, but from the UN. And then I read Newsweek, Time Magazine, Financial Times of London, The Economist Magazine. I, I read these quotes here. We wrote the article three months ago now. First big cover story in, our, in the InfoWars magazine when the physical magazine started coming out three months ago. Bankers declare they've conquered the U.S. and Europe. Economic takeover. And in that huge 12-page article, I don't know, it's got to have 100 bibliography links. And, and it's online, too, free, online. And video clips of them saying they've conquered us, they're going to shut off the economy, make us all poor, bankrupt us, and socialize us, and then they're going to carry out open eugenics on us, one-child families, uh, forced abortions, infanticide of the young up to age three, uh, getting rid of old people, euthanasia, which they've made so fashionable, forced government euthanasia. And I sit here realizing the general public doesn't even know what these words are. When I sit up here and talk to them, you know, people think it's like, people think intellectualism, even fake intellectualism, is only for maybe 1% of the population. You know, maybe 1% would watch Firing Line like I would watch when I was a kid. And even I knew that was affected and fake. A guy with a fake Atlantic accent up there with his feet kicked up going, let me talk to you. Now, let's see here. Let's ask this question now. Yes. Ah, oh, good. Isn't that really what it's all about? And then people sit around watching that, thinking they're intellectuals, and even that isn't even real. It's a sub-basement of fake debate within a limited paradigm structure. And I realize I'm sitting here with the textbooks and the documents like EcoScience right over there on the shelf where the White House science czar says they're putting poison in our water to reduce our fertility and reduce our lifespans. And it's all happening. And people don't even know what reduced fertility or lifespan means. Or if they do, they're in such a catatonic, dreamlike state, they don't even understand they're under mortal assault. Brutal, concerted, scientific attack. I mean, we're being overrun, taken over. Civilization has officially collapsed. The family is gone. The general public are dumb animals. We are back live, and some people would tune into a broadcast like this and say, oh, this guy's negative. Really, it's uh, negative when uh, there's a scientific, technocratic elite writing hundreds of books and white papers publicly describing going back 80 years ago right through to today exactly what they're doing to us and talking about us like we don't even hear them or see what they're saying or doing in plain view. You know, I personally take that very, very personally. Uh, I, as a man, try to then learn more about these enemies. I try to learn uh, what they stand for what they believe in, what their goals are, and how that's going to affect uh, myself and my family. Because I've noticed with the general public, there's a fake sentimentality. They like the appearance of caring about their children. They like the appearance of caring about their society. They like the appearance uh, of being involved in their community or being informed. But they are a mile wide and a millimeter deep. There is nothing real there. They're not alive. They're not real people. They have no depth. They have no depth. Now, there are a lot of people that do have depth. And there are a lot of good men and women of every race, color, and creed across this globe. But I'll tell you this. If you don't fight for liberty and freedom, and if you don't fight for dignity, and if you don't fight to be treated with respect, then you are a barbarian. You don't want civilization. And I'll tell you, civilization as we know it is already gone. We live in a facade, a artificial environment, bombarding everyone with incredibly negative anti-family pro-death. I've got a stack of articles here about new sitcoms in North America and in the UK. Uh, new BBC where it's people committing suicide and how cool it is. 
uh, other shows where it's bad to have a mommy and a daddy. See, it's not just okay to have two daddies or two mommies. No, no, no. It's bad to have a daddy and a mommy. You see. I, I was in Whole Foods yesterday because my wife asked me to go to the grocery store for her. And I don't go very often. And there's a Whole Foods uh, closer to our house because I live out in the country. Believe it or not, there's, there's a satellite Whole Foods sticking out towards the edge of town. And I drove over to it. And I was buying a bunch of vegetables mainly. That's what my wife had on the list. And uh, a guy walks over and he says, oh, you're making some very healthy choices. And I looked at the guy and thought, does, you know, does this guy know who I am? And I said, hi, how you doing? He goes, hi. Didn't know who I was. Uh, you know, walked onto the store, ran into a few listeners. And then another woman walks over and says, oh, you've made very healthy choices. And I thought, okay, this is on purpose. And then I rounded the uh, area over where they got the yogurt and all the rest of it. And there was a big hand-drawn sign, or meant to look hand-drawn hand over, the, over the, the cold cabinets. And it said, my name's blah, blah. And I should have taken a photo of it. But I'm going to go back in there and do a report on it. And he said, uh, the reason I like working here 16 years is I get to influence what people eat. It wasn't I get to work somewhere where we promote health, healthy food. He goes, I get to influence what people eat. And so I guess this is some new rollout where they don't just peck at you, you shouldn't get plastic and then get rid of plastic entirely about social engineering. It, it's, it's all about being fully immersed and America is a giant re-education camp. And that's what it is. Uh, public schools are total systems to turn you against your parents, dumb you down, teach you to be herd driven. And I've had the former head of the Department of Education and Policy on many times, Charlotte Littlefield, uh, Charlotte Iserby, um, and um, you, know, you know, just an amazing uh, lady. And, you know, her dad was skull and bones, the rest of it. And that's, she's the lady that leaked to Anthony Sutton and to Congress all that info in the 70s. Uh, but the point is, I mean, she's got all the documents where it was all planned. This is a planned, deliberate dumbing down. We sell the book, deliberate dumbing down, if anybody still reads, at InfoWarsStore.com. Uh, it's the size of a little phone book, uh, breaking all that down. This has been done by design. And... People should be upset about going into bondage. They should be upset about social engineering. They should be upset uh, about classical authoritarianism. They should be upset when the White House uh, first lady is, is, quote, setting standards on what kids eat. And from Colorado to Illinois, there are mainstream news articles. You can pull them up where the parents aren't allowed to pack the lunch the school decides. Uh, I mean, this is the type of stuff we're dealing with. And and, and Bloomberg comes out uh, and says, hey, I'm going to tell you what to eat. I'm going to tell you what to do. And by the way, I'm going to sue gun manufacturers. So we bankrupt self-defense. I mean, these are ravenous control freaks. And what do you do when you don't want petty status because you're not a troop of baboons where the dominant one gets the highest in the tree or a, a flock of cockatoos, you know, in uh, Australia where the dominant one gets in the top of the tree and chirps and sings proudly or iguanas where the dominant iguana, uh, you know, gets up on the highest branch of the tree. I mean, I'm not thrilled and excited by that. That doesn't make me happy. And running other people's lives and having power over people doesn't make me happy. Inventing things, creating things, being private. Uh, I mean, I'm on a search for normal, good people that aren't users and mentally ill. I'm on a search for people that could be my friend. I'm on a search for any decent people that aren't backstabbing stupid nothings. You know, and I never had a high view of myself. I just began to realize, you know, this species is a stinking joke.
The elite are a group of knuckle-dragging, cancerous control freaks who are just psychopaths, who've created a, a sadistic psychopaths, who've created a cosmology to carry out their control freak dreams and lust and things upon the population so they can have the most beautiful and creative and, uh, you know, kneel down to them because they control the symbol of energy money through fractional reserve derivatives fraud. They control everything because they literally have a magic hat through, through fraud because they control the media they bought off in the last hundred years to tell everybody that they're actually running everything and are good people. So you've got a degenerate, hunchback, literally elite, uglier than the day is long, spiritually and physically, who hate everyone that are pure or beautiful. And then you've got, they've turned the general public into mutated, ugly slobs, and I mean spiritual slobs. Just, just, I mean, you look at men today, and I mean, they are just incredibly shallow, nothing weaklings. And they want to argue with you about sports. And when you don't know about sports, they'll laugh and go, oh, you don't know. <laughs> like, you're not, yeah, man, I'm not cool. Yeah, right. I know about the economy and quantum mechanics and uh, engineering and societal development and sociology and anthropology because it's addicting to know how the world really works, except careful how much knowledge you get because then you come to grips with the fact that the humanity is rotting, absolutely rotting. And the only way to save my family is to go out and engage the rotting carcass and try to reanimate it against the globalists because the globalists are, are engineering a world government, shutting off the resources while posing as the savior. They need to shut the resources off and so there's lesser and less resources so you'll sell out for nothing so they can give you chicken feed for your birthright of liberty and so they can forge you into little armies of waddling uh, effeminate nothings, these men who, who openly tell you they have power through the Borg Hive Collective, who are proud of it, who are proud of their pathetic weakness. They are proud of how destroyed they are. They are proud of how spiritually dead they are. These churches, these Rockefeller World Council of Churches, literal government propaganda whorehouses. The people, they love, most people love their kids dying of cancer nowadays because they get attention from their neighbors. They don't want to know why their kids are dying of cancer because they injected them in the vaccines with it. They're murdering you. Let you not stare into the abyss too long, at least you become the abyss. Was it Nietzsche said that? Of course, he also said that which does not kill you only makes you stronger. You know, I study this. I'm not going to exaggerate. Not as much as I used to. 15 hours a day. There's been times in my life where I've studied 18 hours a day on the New World Order. And that's why it's so frustrating. I study what the globalists write and say because they operate like you don't even know they exist. The general public, you go out and say, hey... Have you heard about the world government? They'll say, oh, that's what kooks talk about, even though it's now admitted we're going under a private corporate world government. And they think you care what they think about you. And it's not that that affects you that they don't care in the way they think. It affects you that you realize they're helpless and it's very upsetting. And I liken it to, you know, telling somebody, hey, um, you know, don't get in the car with that guy. And then the woman gets found two days later dead in a, dead in a field. I mean, it's, you don't feel good about the fact you were right about it. You don't feel good about that. It, it's, it's, it's a very frustrating to be absolutely on target about where the world's going and to know so few even know it. So few are even aware. It is just so frustrating that the globalists openly announce what they're doing to us, how they're socially engineering us, how they're taking over our lives and how they're doing it towards a bad aim. But they have this general PR cover story that all these incredibly satisfied trendies who call themselves liberals buy into, who just walk around with a satisfied look on their face and who just will not face reality.
you know, at least conservatives think freedom and private property is a good thing. Sure, they buy into mainline Republican leaders that will absolutely sell them out and they're con to a great extent, but at least they have some of the basic facts. I mean, I look at these articles I have here. We're going to take calls in the second hour and get into a bunch of other news. And it makes my head spin. I mean, look at this NBC World News headline. Kids removed from UK couple over support for independence from Europe. And they took their children and gave them to foster care because they were politically active in the UK Independence Party. Now, if they were active in a white supremacist group, you shouldn't take their kids. But UKIP, our frequent guest here, they are the third largest party in England, in the UK, the fastest growing, gaining all these seats in the European Union Parliament. That's rubber stamp. The bureaucrats run it, but at least they're in it. Nigel Farage, just incredible speaker. Uh, it's about getting sovereignty back. It's about cutting taxes. It's basically a mild libertarian group. They're not even libertarian. They're so mainline conservative. Folks, they're taking their kids. They're arresting them. Lord Moncton's one of the founders of it. You've heard him here on the show. Lord Christopher Moncton. In fact, I want to get him on this week about this. Or Nigel Farage, member of the UK India Independence Party. And you can go watch NBC News is covering this, going, should your children be taken if you're conservative? And see, it's not just a standalone case. I happen to know about this in Europe and now starting in Canada, and they're starting in here. They're arresting preachers that read out of the Bible criticizing homosexuality. This is authoritarianism, ladies and gentlemen. And again, they're not even being authoritarian because they want to be sweet to downtrodden groups. That's a cover. This is a cold-blooded program. Do you ever hear of the gay and lesbian groups criticizing the fact that it's been declassified, that HIV, this came out in Congress, look it up. You can debate whether it was manufactured or not, but the point is, in the late 70s, it was put in hepatitis shots in San Francisco, New York, London, and Paris, and given to gay men because they were having hundreds of partners a month at that time to spread it. They used them to spread HIV. It's all just a cover, ladies and gentlemen. When you come to grips with the full magnitude of what we're facing, people ask, why am I still alive? Why am I still in the air? They think you're so lost. They think you're so pathetic. They think you're in such a trance that so what if Alex Jones goes on the air and tells you about it? Ron Paul gave his 49-minute speech a week and a half ago. We heard some of it last Sunday. And he said, we're going under world government run by private banks who pay no taxes. You can go read the transcripts online or just type in Ron Paul's farewell address. It's got millions of views online. On C-SPAN, John Bounds doing a project where we're putting documents, articles, news clips to everything he says. We're going to be airing it. Just be ready, what, John, by the end of this week? I know you've been pulling, I mean, you've been pulling double duty, but I want to, yeah, that's great. So Wednesday or Thursday, but take your time on this, though. The point is, is that all of this is going on, and he says it is a group of organized, premeditated, these are quotes, authoritarian psychopaths. That's right. And he is a real scholar. He's done the research. So have I. And, man, that's, what, that's what's so chilling about this is when you realize what this planet really is and what we're really in the middle of and the facades and the stores and all of it is just window dressing, folks, for groups that are spiking the food, the water, the air, everything. And our DNA is changing. I was listening yesterday to 590 AM driving in the car and they had some doctors on, different group of doctors going, yeah, about hormone replacement for women. It's interesting shows on the weekend, almost better than the weekdays. But the point is I tune in to different shows, Kenny Romeyer, you name it. But I was tuning in to local, for local people listening on our local affiliate. Uh, and uh, I listened to about 30 minutes. In fact, I got home and I was still listening in the car after, you know, sitting there for 10 minutes with my kids wanting to finish it. And, and the doctors were going, yeah, we used to do hormone replacement with progesterone and stuff, you know, for older women, but now it's young women's hair, hair is falling out and thyroid problems and 
we're seeing increases in cancer and stuff. So on and on and on. Well, yeah, of course you are. Again, go look at the real numbers. I mean, if you don't take this stuff serious, if you don't understand what's going on, folks, you better find out real fast. If you don't know what eugenics is in the name of whatever God you pray to, or if you don't, if you pray to yourself, you know, you're a materialist, well, then I can't help you. All I can say is, man, this is so heavy, it's above my pay grade. And, and I'll tell you right now, I feel like a pile of garbage because... I know how hardcore this information is, and I don't, I can't come up with words. I can't come up with the energy. I can't come up with the oratory flourishes strong enough to properly convey to you the magnitude of what we face. And a lot of people say, well, Alex, that's fear mongering. You're trying to scare people? No, I think you're like I am. If a guy's coming to rob my house at night and I see somebody walking around out by my cars, I don't want to hide under the bed and wish somebody wasn't trying to break in my cars or break in my house. I'm not happy about it, but I'm going to go to the instant access safe and I'm going to pull out my shotgun. And I'm going to reach in and grab my holster and clip it on with two, two, two handguns. And I'm going to open the door and I'm going to tell you, put your hands up. And if you don't, I'm going to kill you. Not because I live in fear, I live in power. I mean, I'm a throwback. I'm an old-fashioned guy. Not looking for trouble. But you know what? When you start something with me, I'm not afraid. I'm, I, I, I'm instinctive. And you know what? I've learned all this information, and, and, and I would think you'd want to know this. I think you'd want to know foreign banks conquered us and are bragging about it in literally hundreds of publications a month. I think you'd want to know there's probably 100 books back there on our bookshelf for the globalists brag they're poisoning our food and water and call us dumb animals. I think you'd want to know there's hundreds of textbooks published. They teach it right here at the University of Texas for the social workers that the family's a disease that has to be gotten rid of. I thought you'd want to know. I thought you'd want to stand up for yourself. I thought you'd want to live. But you know what? A lot of you don't. A lot of you don't. You're going to sign your wife, your children, everything over to evil. And you're just going to go watch another football game and act manly and strut around and try to sound mainstream. Okay. But let me tell you, the facade is about to disappear. And things are going to get worse and worse very, very quickly. Know that and understand that. Coming up, we got a key Ron Paul clip backing my call for secession against the globalist. Not the secession the globalist told you about, but the real secession. Your phone calls and a lot more. I'll give the number out and a ton of news on the economy and the military and so much more. Second hour coming up. We are in the midst of the great animating contest of life. The struggle. And in this age of wickedness, we struggle for our immortal souls. Make no mistake about that fact. Make no mistake about good and evil. Make no mistake that evil is real. Make no mistake that a dark force in the universe is real that animates those that serve death and destruction. As for me and my house, I choose life. And I choose to be what God created me to be, not what the New World Order, who wants to counterfeit and play the part of God, as laid out and planned for me and my family. None of us are perfect, but the New World Order tries to keep us from legitimate suffering and uh, seeks to steal our ultimate future. Because to do the right thing sometimes is painful. In the end, there's always a much greater reward. Evil is quicker, it's easier. What's the quote about Darth Vader, the dark side? Is the dark side stronger? No, quicker, easier, more seductive. And it's in children's parables that we do find the truth. Life is such an amazing adventure, and one of the greatest lies is that it isn't an adventure. I look at people who are so unhappy because they say the world isn't interesting when there is explosive life 
and creativity and, and, and opportunities to challenge yourself and others and opportunities to inform others, opportunities to build up others. But instead, in the modern world, you're supposed to get ahead by pulling others down. And I guess we're all guilty of that to some extent or another. But life is a journey, and we are meant to develop throughout our life. We are meant to develop and build ourselves to a point and go through those trials and tribulations when we're young, but through that process become a true, developed, sentient being. that through space and time existed and stood for something good and helped pass on experiences and ideas and inventions to the next group. Instead, humans have failed to evolve and have instead devolved. And I don't use the word devolve or evolve in the politically charged and limited terms of someone like Charles Darwin. I mean, evolve in that humans have a predatory side to go out and catch fish or kill a deer. But that's limited to simply acquiring protein and fat. But taking our own species and, and developing high-tech systems of predatory activity and then building the whole society around a giant dumbed-down reservoir of people to be fed on culturally, militarily, physically, spiritually, the, the, the social engineers must know that to even make that decision to consciously do that, that's always going on at one level or not, is the ultimate act of dehumanizing themselves. And the fact that they could consciously make that decision was not about their survival or their ultimate enlightenment, but was based solely on their stunted, malfunctioning, destructive failure. How do you know the enemy? How do you know who seeks to enslave you? and ultimately suck out your life force and kill you. Anyone who tells you that humanity is inherently bad, that humanity is inherently ugly, that you should stand down, that you should uh, give in to a collective, that, uh, that we should live in 200 foot square foot boxes for the planet, that we should pay Al Gore carbon taxes, that we should go under UN Agenda 21. I know who these people are. They are eugenicists who believe they are gods and that you are animals, and they have engineered you to act like dumb animals. And even though I get upset at the trance-like, dumbed-down zombie population sometimes, they are not the enemy. They are the socially targeted, engineered, with high-tech systems of social control, victims. And those of us that are aware of this and that understand what's happening must get aggressive with our deeds and our actions. And that means when the system tries to henpeck us and the system tries to social engineer us, we need to get back in its face. And we need to be at the county commissioners meetings and the city council meetings and the state house meetings. And we need to be at the congressional meetings and we need to be going to the corporate meetings and we need to be getting involved because all that evil needs to triumph is when good men and women do nothing. We have gotten to this point as a society by not being involved and by thinking that we can just worry about our job and worry about entertainment and somebody else will handle it. Well, you know what? Somebody else did handle it. 
And the people that handled it are not stupid in the classical sense. They're very smart, but they're smart like a wolf. They're not smart long term. They can think a few steps down the road, not 10, 20, 30. They don't care what happens to their kids. They don't care what happens to the species. They don't care if humanity makes it to the nearest star systems and it goes beyond a type one civilization. They don't care. They want to feel good and exercise dominant power over people now. And if that means they got to bankrupt the economy to make you dependent on them, there is only one God and it's the government and Obama is his prophet. If they have to do that, they will. And that's only the best of the globalists. The worst of them, I've read their literature, I've seen their art, I know their culture. And let me tell you, it's indescribable. You ever had to clean a dead possum out of your heating and cooling vents, your central air, and, and you know what, I'm, that's evil. That smell is evil. It's as close as I can get to it. They just, it's like a button they got to push. The raw power to kill, the raw power to take things away from people because they're inherently weak and they hate the weakness. Those that have inherent power are embarrassed by power. Those that have inherent grace and strength and honor know that we are imperfect and twisted and so we are ashamed of our power. Well, let me tell you, you better get over that shame, ladies and gentlemen, and you better get on the field and you better stop second-guessing yourself. Because let me tell you, we don't have long. Speaking of solutions, you know, I called a week and a half ago for real secession via the Declaration of Independence that it is our right, our duty. The states made the federal government. It's our right and duty. When the federal government's run by foreign banks, brags it's been hijacked, says it'll secretly arrest us, says it's going to pass VAT and carbon taxes to give it to foreign banks while holding us hostage with a fiscal cliff and increasing spending. That's their answer. Borrow, borrow, borrow. More fiat from foreign banks who then get our real infrastructure for nothing. Their answer is just go into the night with them. My answer is have the states reorganize and from that position of constitutional authority and lawfulness, rebuke the out of control federal government, not to, to fully dissolve it, but to remove the globalist and restore the Republic. A re-upload of the Bill of Rights Constitution Declaration of Independence. No constitutional convention needed. Ron Paul's written an editorial. It's at Infowars.com. Secession. Are we free to go? And here is his talk earlier this week. Little four-minute report where, and I've talked to his office and talked to his crew. We've had his top advisors on. They concur with my basic analysis. Constitutional lawyer Bruce Fine, constitutional lawyer, both advisors to him. Edwin Vieira were on again last week, as you know. And by the way, YouTube erased those videos today. 20 plus videos just disappeared and said removed by user. We're going to have to re-upload those and everybody has, they, those were going viral with millions of views. They did not want people seeing that info. So we're going to re-upload those interviews and make sure people get them. But here is Ron Paul. Again, don't think you'll always just turn on the radio and get this. There are powerful forces that don't want you to hear this, okay? Here's Ron Paul uh, on Right to Revolt. Here it is. Hello, this is Ron Paul with your weekly update for November 19th. Is all the recent talk of secession, mere sour and grapes over the election, or perhaps something deeper? Currently, there are active petitions in support of secession for all 50 states, with Texas taking the lead in number of signatures. Texas has well over the number of signatures needed to generate a response from the administration. And while I wouldn't hold my breath on Texas actually seceding, I believe these petitions raise a lot of worthwhile questions about the nature of our union. Is it treasonous to want to secede from the United States? Many think the question of secession was settled by our civil war. On the contrary, the principles of self-governance and voluntary association are at the core of our founding. Clearly, Thomas Jefferson believes secession was proper, albeit as a last resort. Writing to William Giles in 1825, he concluded that states, quote, should separate from our companions only when the sole alternatives left are the dissolution of our union with them or submission to a government without limitation of powers, close quote. 
Keep in mind that the first and third paragraphs of the Declaration of Independence expressly contemplate the dissolution of a political union when the underlying government becomes tyrannical. Do we have a government without limitation of powers yet? The federal government kept the union together through violence and force in the Civil War, but did might really make right? Secession is deeply an American principle. This country was born through secession. Some felt it was treasonous to secede from England, but those traitors became our country's greatest patriots. There is nothing treasonous or unpatriotic about wanting a federal government that is more responsive to the people it represents. That is what our Revolutionary War was all about, and today our own federal government is vastly overstepping its constitutional bounds with no signs of reform. In fact, the recent election only further entrenched the status quo. If the possibility of secession is completely off the table, there is nothing to stop the federal government from continuing to encroach on our liberties and no recourse for those who are sick and tired of it. Consider the ballot measures that passed in Colorado and Washington State regarding marijuana laws. The people in those states have clearly indicated that they are ready to try something different where drug policy is concerned. All right. Yet they will Hit pause. We'll come back and play the last few minutes of the next segment. Uh, and again, it's a much more powerful article uh, that he wrote. It's at Infowars.com, Secession, uh, Are We Free to Go? Uh, and he just breaks down the fact you're not in a free country if you can't leave. It's the states that created the federal government. The federal government was taken over by foreign banks. Read my article. Banks bragged they've conquered the U.S. and Europe. For the dozens and dozens of quotes by the private mega banks bragging about it. And so we've got to have the states stand up and point this out or there's no hope. We can't keep rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic forever. And then I'll give out the number for your take on this and a lot more coming up in the next segment. Then I will also get into the big economic news straight ahead. A lot of people don't care if they're a slave. They just don't want to be embarrassed about it. So most people know we've got a corrupt, out-of-control government run by corporate interests, but they don't care, you know, as long as, as long as it's not rubbed in their face. And the system likes to tell you how much power you got and how you're really voting for somebody at the federal level. And, you know, the globalists come in and promote illegal aliens and say, oh, Obama winning shows that we've got to legalize all the illegal aliens now. You know, that validates Obama's whole agenda and shows people want government-run health care and shows people want socialism. And the Republicans better get in line and get behind that. And so you see Boehner come out and you even see Rand Paul come out. I'm going to talk about this tomorrow and say, well, we got to have an amnesty now. The people have spoken. Meanwhile, there was proven election fraud nationwide. I had nonpartisan election experts on like Bev Harris. She's been a Democrat saying whole states Romney clearly won. They gave to Obama, and I wasn't even promoting Romney. The point is they want to create a mandate for everything Obama's done. I mean, if the illegal aliens came and said, hey, we want your guns, should we turn all our guns in because there's a mandate? There's not a mandate. The foreign mega banks that have hijacked this country want us disarmed and want us bankrupted. Do you understand that? And... It is a hoax when they get up on the news and say, oh, my gosh, we've got to be fair and friendly. We've got to legalize the 30 million illegal aliens here. Because that's what Latinos want. And the media just says Latinos want other Latinos legalized. And then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Well, I guess you're anti-Latino. You're anti-Hispanic if you don't want people legalized. Really, do they let people into Guatemala from the country south of there? No. Does Mexico let Guatemalans in? No. Do they beat them up and put them in forced labor camps? Yes. I'm not saying that's good. Does Mexico shake down Americans down there and rob them? Yes. Can I go to Mexico and show up at a hospital with my wife and say I'm here to have a baby pay for it all and put me on full welfare? No. I got an article right here. I'm going to finish the Ron Paul clip. 
you can uh, go to the federal website and right there on the site, here it is right here, government website for immigrants, come to America, take advantage of our free stuff. The website's welcome to USA.gov. And it says you can get upwards of $60,000 as a couple a year and have your baby here in the U.S. for free. Go read it. Of course, I can't go to the hospital and have it, quote, for free. And again, once they get a big enough group here who are clients of the corrupt government, they will vote to take the guns, the private property, everything. It's always the ultra rich. University of Texas has a couple billion in their permanent fund, a billion and a half dollars in gold, over a hundred billion dollars in assets. I don't know, Wikipedia says they have $20 billion in, in just physical assets, real estate, and eight billion in the permanent fund, whatever. But I get to pay now in, in their hospital district for their new medical school. But it's only 300 bucks a year on top of the massive amounts of money I pay in property tax. And my property taxes go to the hospital district, so I get to pay for abortions. Only county in Texas that does that. I mean, you know, it's, it's all, you see, I know the facts. I know I'm right. And then I sit here and know whether you're black, white, whatever it is, Hispanic, that 30 million illegal aliens in this country, who now under the amnesty plans, Bush pushed, and now they're pushing again, will be able to bring their families here. It'll just completely bankrupt the country. I mean, take California that's becoming completely bankrupted with the carbon taxes and the illegals. What are they doing? Raising taxes again. They know when they do that, it'll bankrupt things further. That's the consolidation plan. I saw a few months ago in that big report that came out in the Associated Press where all over the U.S., tens of billions a year are sent to illegal aliens' houses. The IRS will give illegal aliens as many tax ID numbers as they want. And it was reported on one house in Austin got $89 million. And there will be no prosecution of the $89 million that one house got. They went and checked the house. What was it? Ten people were living there. $89 million. I mean, it was just a whole bunch of, you can't even, the fraud is so complete. And people are like, why do they want fraud this, this massive? Because it's all to foreign banks that loan us zeros and ones. It's all Bernie Madoff. It's all made up. It's all Ponzi. It's all derivatives. And the government wants the country fully bankrupt so bad. And then they're going to say, you're not going to get your welfare. You're not going to get your food stamps. You're, you know, 50 million Americans on it doubled in the last three and a half years from 25 million to 49 million. Full step Social Security, Obama phone. He gave us a phone. He's going to do more. Guys, pull up the weekly standard where the average welfare couple gets 61 well, they said 59000 The number's actually, I looked it up, $61,000. And again, I'm not just throwing the illegal aliens under the bus. A lot of them are so moral, comparatively, that they refuse to take it. Some of them do. There's a lot of criminal illegal aliens. They're all criminals, but, you know, technically, but there's some that, that aren't actual criminal types. There it is, over 60000 in welfare spent per household in poverty. And that's the uh, latest numbers uh, from the community, according to the Census American Community Survey. <laughs> and you can't beat that. You're not going to be able to stop that. And as it all implodes, they're going to say, as they've done in Europe, three bailouts the last two years to foreign banks. They go, hey, we'll get more money for Spain or Greece for welfare and pensions and the rest of it. If you raise all these taxes on the middle class, and the middle class is disappearing. That's how the ultra-rich extinct the middle class. That's how they get rid of them. That's how they annihilate them. And then they say, give us VAT, give us carbon tax. Oh, my gosh, the fiscal cliff. These new taxes run by the federal government, which is really globalist controlled, these new taxes, they will keep the welfare payments going. And I saw an article, what was it, in Reuters last week, I meant to cover. But things are so crazy now, this didn't even rate covering. 
that they've had a whole bunch of congressional meetings in the Congressional Budget Office of the White House in the last few weeks. And they're saying, yes, yes, it's true. We're going to take the private pensions and the government's going to manage them now, the 401ks, and take only about 20% the first time off the top. <laughs> and, and again, you're like, well, we got to prop the system up. Can't let it all go down. It's designed to bring it all down. They're bringing it down to consolidate it. They want you poor while training you to get the tiny chicken feed. People will beg when they're done for, for one one hundredth of what they would have gotten out of a free system, a free market. We'll be back. We'll give you the number, finish the Ron Paul speech and a lot more. Phone calls at the end of this segment and the next. I want to finish that Ron Paul clip I played earlier. We talked about secession uh, last week. And I also want to give the number out for everybody who wants to call in on the Sunday show. I do want to take some calls today. 877-789-ALEX. 877-789-2539. First time callers today. 877-789-2539. Okay. Uh, some of the other uh, news here before I finish this Ron Paul clip. Here's the type of stuff that catches my eye. This is out of Bloomberg. Elderly at record spurs Japan stores. And it uh, goes on to talk about the different uh, stocks going up. Very weird headline. Elderly at record spurs Japan stores chase to $1.4 trillion. And it goes on to say uh, that... Uh, the sales of adult diapers in Japan exceeded those for babies for the first time last year at their major supermarkets nationwide. Customers uh, can feel Japan aging. Literally, it has made shopping carts uh, lighter. And it goes on to talk about the fact that not only is Japan having on average 1.2 children, I'm not making this up. There's another mainstream article on it. But Japanese women are jealous that men like to poop and urinate in their pants now. This is, is middle-aged men as part of decadence. So they now enjoy pooping and urinating in their pants. Folks, I'm not, I'm not making this up, okay? Again, it's not just in America that's collapsing into decadence. Um, in fact, I read that last night in another article researching this. But you guys type in, the Huffington Post had it, but it was also in Reuters. It was... Uh, or people won't believe it. Type in, um, get the exact headlines I was seeing. Because I just, I heard this on the radio as a news piece that sales of adult diapers in aging Japan outpaced that for babies or infants. So I got home and searched it and found a whole bunch of mainstream articles about uh, something like sales of diapers up Japanese, more Japanese women wearing diapers. And then it just said that you know, they're rebelling against men that not only, you know, that the new fad with men is to defecate in their pants. I'm not talking about old men that are incontinent. I mean, it's really cool. And I'm not joking, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, there it is. Adult diapers big with young Japanese women. Yeah, there it is. What is that? What is that publication? Is that is that Bloomberg? Okay, so that's Huffington Post. Yeah, I also saw Reuters. Yeah, and it says it's the new trendy thing. And if it's trendy, you got to do it. I mean, you know. I'm not against having tattoos, but my God, does everyone have to have one? But at least Americans, kind of the trend is to act tough and have tattoos. I mean, I guess acting like something is the beginning of maybe being tough. Of course, in my book, being tough isn't going to bars and having ceremonial threats to fight with people that you then back down from if someone accepts the challenge. You know, it's ceremonial combat. Uh, it, it would be actually being informed, being involved. To me, that's manly, you know, but not wanting to be a slave, you know, knowing that the CDC has hundreds of pages of adverse reactions from vaccines while the news says there's zero side effects. I got a big stack of news here on the latest on GMO, causing massive organ failure, all sorts of endocrine disruptions, diabetes, just, just tons of scientific mainline studies, how they're killing us by design. But, you know, that's not manly, you know, I mean, for a man to read studies, just, you know. so again, I, uh, but in Japan, it is more of uh, men have gotten, because the Japanese used to be totally into cleanliness, you know, b bathing twice a day, uh, 
uh, you know, into being very uh, hardworking, decent people. But see, the new decadence is, and the television sells this, because they're getting everybody ready to be euthanized, uh, is uh, to, uh, I, I did some research on it. It was uh, over here, it's, 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 it's amputating limbs now. Uh, that's, that's the new sexy thing to do. It's like, oh, you only chopped your fingers off. I chopped my arm off. Oh, really? I chopped both my legs off. And the new trendy thing is here in America, thousands have now done it. I forget the exact name for it. You can look it up. Uh, men have their arms and legs cut off, and then they're put in a diaper. So actually, maybe the Japanese picked up on that, and then you're taken care of by your, uh, by your, uh, your male lover. <clears throat> See, societies do this once they get ready to totally collapse. The Romans did it. The Babylonians did it. We, we're already collapsed. You know that, right? And, and, and it's just going to become more evident now in the next few years. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the other news here. Yes, elderly uh, wearing their diapers. Now, the TSA mothballed and shut down the scanners almost everywhere. That got picked up by CBS News and others on our call for National Opt-Out Day of the Cancer-Causing Scanners. Two weeks ago, Congress did a report admitting it was causing cancer, and the TSA had been caught lying about that. Uh, Obama's secret directive, again, Congress not allowed to see the new secret directive. Why? I mean, the states have stood down, the Congress has stood down because we're under a banking dictatorship. And now they're saying, because, oh, the, the, that, that Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan, they're going to pay for the president's inauguration. We're now going to have corporate sponsorships. And, and that's a good idea. Maybe the president should start wearing like a NASCAR uniform. I think it's Jesse Ventura said this on my show a few months ago. I think that's where I heard it, where they all just wear the logos of what owns them. Of course, most of them are Rothschild Rockefeller subsidiaries. So how about just a big Rothschild Rockefeller? We want the world for ourselves and the life extension technologies. We've almost got it. Once the robot armies are in place and the automated kill systems in place, we're going to launch drones and kill all of you. The president could just wear a big, big robe that said that on it. <laughs> I know you think it's funny out there because under the new decadence, you want to be killed. They've got all the, the future, you know, soon there won't be any humans. It's going to be beautiful. They're getting you ready to, to accept it so you don't fight it. I understand. I under, and, and, and you know what? If you think you're trash and you think you're ugly and worthless and you want to lay down and die to the globalists, that's your issue. I don't want to. You know, I've studied the globalists. I don't like what they're doing. I don't like what they stand for. And uh, I'm trying to organize people to resist it peacefully. Because the globalists are off in their ivory armored towers. They hope we have some fight with their dumbed down police and military. And I'm not attacking the police and military. They're dumbed down like the general public. They've been raised on adulterated poison, GMO, additives that are really just drug chemicals, set in front of a television from birth, have no idea. They're in a total daze. And a lot of a lot of yuppies and mid-level globalists, social engineer, psychologist types, they get off advertising types. They get off admin types, you know, advertiser types. They they all talk about how dumb the public is in their publications, but they get off on it. It's like funny to them. Oh, you think it's funny? Your kids are going to live around these people. There's total blowback from all this into the upper echelons. The upper echelons are a bunch of rotting scum. By the way, their life expectancy is going down. Let me tell you how the universe works. You're not really going to get all that life extension. You may extend yourself in agony, but you won't even be what you were before. But you'll have scientists that, you know, uh, tell you fraudulently you are. You've destroyed yourselves. Good job, New World Order. If you were so elite, you would have lifted up everybody. Instead... You try to drive everybody down so you could be on top because you're threatened by real consciousness. But you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You will not enter into the next phase of human development. You are a failure, and I know that. My gut knows that. You know what my gut is? Everybody's got it. It's called my spirit. And the, oh, by the way, the controllers all know that's real. And all the science is just confirming it. And they want you shut off from that. Well, you know what? I'm not shut off from that. And my gut's never wrong, ever. 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 The only time I fail is when I follow my flesh and not my spirit. You know what my spirit says? 
Alex, don't get sad that the wicked seem to thrive and can't be stopped. They will be cut down come the harvest. They will cut themselves down. They will destroy themselves. The house of Rothschild will fall. Some phone calls here in the final segment. I'll be back tomorrow, 12 noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central with a three-hour mainline weekday transmission. I'm in kind of a dark mood today just because I, I understand reality to a deeper and deeper level. During the break, John Bound in there running the board and the video cameras and the rest of it. He said, uh, you know, Infowars Nightly News reporter, the Moonlight's here running the radio show. He said, uh, you know, they call our libertarian movement a movement. They call conservatism a movement. They call communism a movement. Why don't we call this a movement? And I said, it has a name. It's called organized evil. It's really a eugenics movement, a playing God movement, a, a, a mad scientist movement. A final revolution is what they call it. And they, they said they would construct kind of a false political socioeconomic reality and use the media to keep us within that confined area. And then, without, and, and then with a dumbed down mass, there's really no way to revolt against it because once you've dumbed people down multi-generationally and reduced the language, which has now happened, it's, it's almost impossible to even communicate with people, especially when they've been given a psychological compulsion and almost psychological trigger to defend their servitude because they don't want to admit they're slaves. Not just because they're cowards, but because at a base level, they have no respect for themselves and don't believe they could do anything and they're lazy. But it isn't up to ruined, dumbed down sheeple to defeat this evil. It's to those of us that aren't perfect, but have enough virtue and understanding and who can glimpse the beauty of our species, our, our, our greater angels instead of our lesser angels, to reach towards the stars. Because we, we certainly can do amazing things. The globalists force us the most vile garbage to, to kind of you know, have us resonate at a very low level so that we're easily managed. And, and I, I just, I've never tried to keep people in darkness. That is so anathema to what I stand for. I would think that would be commonplace. But it turns out in this modern world, that is so rare because good people do not have an instinct to a will to power. Evil does. But you better get the will to fight these people. And, and, and so many good people try to overthink it. They've got to come up with a master plan, how you're going to beat them by yourself. And, and no, just start engaging them. Start speaking out. Start saying no. Start educating others. Now is the time, ladies and gentlemen. Spread the word about Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Give them a gift subscription to Infowars Magazine. 12 issues at cost, delivered to people's door. One time you pay, 12 go to your friends and family's door. Great chance to wake them up. Get a PrisonPlanet.tv membership. It's 59 cents a month per person. One membership, 595 is 10 memberships. You create one username and passcode. It's easy to remember that you don't have for other stuff and then give that as an e-card and say, here's a great documentary film archive and you can see this guy's show and give nine friends and family the gift. Keep the one for yourself. It's so simple. Prisonplanet.tv. Break out of the prison. Break out of the prison planet with the info war, with the truth. Harry in Kentucky, then Mike, Daniel, Frank, Mike, and John is all we'll have time for. Harry, go ahead in Kentucky. Oh, hey, hey, Alex. Um, uh, thanks for taking my call. I mean, I'm calling from FEMA Region Forum. I was actually calling about the secessionist movement. Go ahead. I was wondering if we should start, if we, if we wanted to succeed from the federal government, should we start a petition for that? Well, you don't go to the federal government. It made news attention when people go to Obama asking a foreign agent of the UN who violated Article 1, Section 9 to become the head of the Security Council a few years ago. I mean, that was high treason, totally illegal. Uh, but, but it's a way to publicly say we don't like what's happening. I'm saying not a civil war secession, a declaration of independence. The states are all that's left, the only remnant of the old republic. They've got to use the secession power because it says you can, they can remake the government however they see fit. Well, we choose the real republic. Who will argue against that? They're trying to brand secession as you know, the Civil War Ku Klux Klan. Notice they've been selling Lincoln the last three, four years as God. 
with all these movies and books and video games and stuff because they want to have the federal government come in and crush the states. They know when they put the economy into cardiac arrest, the states are going to say no. And any refusal by the states, if Congress says no to anything the president does, they're going to be called secessionist. Congress is told the UN commands our military. We've been conquered, sir. Yes, I saw the reports on all of that. Yeah, now well, they, they want to mop up what's country. left. Now they want to mop up the states and the media and stuff. And we got to dig in and say no. Go ahead. What do we do about Congress? If Congress is supposed to put a stop to all of this now. So. <laughs> Absolutely, but the, 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 you know they've hired a bunch of criminals or they've got them blackmailed. I appreciate your call, sir. We're in deep trouble, but the only hope we've got is admitting hey, no. how bad a trouble we've gotten into. Okay, let's go to uh, Mike in Oregon, real fast, Mike. Hey, Alex, how's it going, my Bill Ranch brother? Good. Well, I was calling you to talk to you about the disinformed people down here who are trying to tell me that the climate change in Hurricane Sandy was caused by our SUVs. Yeah, they and think if they pay the Rothschild Gore Exchange, that's literally who owns it. Al Gore and the Rothschilds are all invested in it. It's a Rothschild-owned exchange totally. It's, it's their exchange. Look it up mainstream news. That that will stop hurricanes. There's always been storms. And it's the new global government tax, and they tell a bunch of primitive, dumbed-down idiots, look, magic is back. People believe in voodoo now again. They're a bunch of superstitious idiots that can't even read or write, and they think paying the globalist money will stop hurricanes. I know. It's, it's, it's driving me crazy. I can't even conceive or anything how these people are even thinking. And it's driving me so crazy. I was wondering if we could do a war, a war growl on air. Absolutely. Go ahead, sir. All right, thanks for the call. I got to jump here, man. Uh, Daniel in Louisiana, go ahead. Hey, Alex, how are you today, man? I'm I'm pretty freaked out how bad stuff's getting. Yeah, me too, me too. I wanted I, I was just listening to you, and I jotted down some points, and I was going to make a couple of points. Go ahead. Up, okay? uh, yeah, you know, one, one of the things that scares me a lot is how uh, people have uh, thrown out their common sense. And uh, and also, uh, people, people uh, they... Uh, they lack a respect for the invisible world. And, and, and when we talk about the chemicals in the food, water, and also our invisible government, people, people have thrown out their common sense, and they also they, they don't respect the invisible world like I was just talking about. But the shadow government is now public. Obama signs an order because Congress wouldn't pass it. We know what the order was, hand it over to the U.N., and he says, well, I'll just sign it in secret and implement it. And, and Congress for a week says we'd like to see that, and Obama says no. Folks! The Congress writes the stinking laws. The Congress raises the taxes. They declare the war. People, man, we're in we're in trouble. I, I just get ready. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we need reform in in, in all of our institu institutions, the educational, our medical, uh, our government. We need mad reform. I agree, brother. Great point. Sorry, I waited to the end to go to calls. I'll try to be better tomorrow. Uh, Frank, Louisiana, real quick. Go ahead. Yeah, Alex, uh, how you doing, buddy? Uh, I'm pretty freaked out, listen, actually. The legal basis that, that you have to do on the secession movement is not only the Tenth Amendment, it's the powerful Article 4, Section 4 clause of the Constitution. The guarantee clause says the United States guarantees the several states who have the power now, because they're given the guarantee, a republic. Well, if your Congress doesn't issue your currency, you're not a republic, you're literally a plutocracy. If your Congress doesn't control your military, you're not a republic. If your Congress doesn't know what the cybersecurity order is, I mean, that is red alert level. But, I mean, exactly. These courts can beat him by using the powerful Article 4, Section 4 guarantee clause and issue writs of quote warrant to the quote warrant to, to the Federal Reserve Banks on the anti-monopoly laws. I agree. No, the power is all there for the states who can remake the government, get rid of it, remake it, whatever they want, anytime they want, Declaration of Independence, and as you said, uh, Article 4, Section 4. But look at Obama violating Article 1, Section 9, heading up the U.N. I mean, I mean, that was like a king coronation when he did that, and the media didn't even cover it. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to uh, Mike in FEMA Region 10. I guess that's out on the old West Coast. Uh, go ahead, sir. 
Yes, sir. Hey, I just got a crazy story real quick. Um, when I was 19, I wasn't awake yet, and uh, this girl who I went to high school with called me one day. She's like, hey, the police department's here. They're giving us a speech on domestic terrorism in our country. And I'm like, okay. And she's like, um, you know, back then, uh, MySpace, you know, I had a picture of me with one of my rifles on MySpace. And they were giving this presentation, and they showed the picture of me during the presentation. My eyes blacked out and were like, this is a domestic terrorist that could live in your area. So she asked the officer, hey, can you print this up, all these you know, my, uh, PowerPoint pictures, on to, you know, print them up out of the printer. So she brought me a copy of it, and there I was, domestic terrorist, because I owned a gun. Listen, so I'm out of time, but you should do a YouTube video on it. I know. I, police have sent me those. They... They say George Washington and Thomas Jefferson are terrorists. I mean, I got it on video, bigger than Dallas, shot in Kansas City. I'm out of time, man. Look, you, we're all under attack. I, I believe in you out there, all of you. You better get involved and get informed and find out just how bad it is. If you look into what I'm claiming, you're going to find out it's true and then some. What are you going to do for your family? You're going to roll over and die?